Hey guys, my name is Yukiomi, and I have a question for you guys. What kind of Asian are you? I've been asked this question throughout my life, and I would simply answer, I'm Indonesian. So, they would ask, oh, so you're Chinese? After that, I would be labeled as Chinese. I mean, my fam family's ancestors were Chinese, but my family is from Indonesia. Moving on, I would have to live through a bunch of Asian stereotypes. People would make fun of me because of my small eyes. I would be called chink and in elementary school. I would be accidentally placed into an ESL class because of my fear of talking English. I can say that throughout my life, I've been in many stereotypes, but I also feel as if my experiences have strengthened my sense of pride in my culture. So what I'm trying to say is that culture is an important aspect in my life and that the Asian culture in Philadelphia is what represents it. So the U.S. is known as the melting pot of diverse cultures and races. Places such as Chinatown can be a prime example of what Asian culture is. Chinatown is one of the most iconic places in Philadelphia where, diff where Asian culture is pr very prominent to its history, traditions, and cuisine. The name Chinatown is not only linked in Philadelphia, but it's linked all throughout the U.S. This form of Asian culture that's invested in the history of Philadelphia is what makes the city so special. So Chinatown is an area where there are different businesses and vendors such as restaurants, convenience stores, and etc. It was first established during the mid-1900s by Cantonese immigrants and it had consisted of a few in restaurants, a grocery store, and a laundromat. However, as time passed, different family-owned businesses would establish new restaurants and stores in Chinatown. Large numbers of families began moving to Chinatown as well. Chinatown would soon become a community where cultural influence is put into that specific part of the city. The Chinese culture of Chinatown would even attract many cities in China. The Friendship Gate, the arch that leads to Chinatown, would be a symbol of that. The gate symbolized the friendship and the cultural similarities between Philadelphia and its sister Ch Chinese sister city, Tianjin. The city of Tianjin wanted to recognize that bond by creating a gate to show their appreciation. So the gate was built in 1982 and was finished in 1984. The city of Philadelphia then dedicated the gate on January 31st, 1984. So moving on, many families would bring their traditions, food, music, and art to the city of Philadelphia. As Chinatown became popular year after year, it also became a main tourist attraction for people all around the world. So moving on to the idea of food, Chinatown is a unique place where you could find different foods and fr from different countries in Asia. Different ingredients and styles of cooking vary from Chinese food, Vietnamese food, Japanese food, Malaysian food, Thai food, and etc. Chinatown is a place where it offers most of these ethnic foods. There are common dishes using duck, pig, and many other animals. However, there are unique dishes that use frog, squid, the feet of chicken, and many other things. Some people might think it's a delicacy, but I think it's that it's just something that you see on a daily in Chinatown. I loved going to Chinatown gr growing up as a kid. I would go in the weekends to get my usually usual Asian pastries for a dollar and bubble tea for or boba. I tried new foods from different cultures and ethnicities, and I loved every single one of them. I enjoyed eating different types of food, whether it was a bowl of heartwarming pho, a bowl of spicy curry with rice, or a plate with roasted duck with rice. I feel as if going to Chinatown really opened up a whole new world of different cultures for me. I was so used to the Indonesian culture since I did grow up in an Indonesian family, so I wasn't able to recognize other Asian cultures. But as I got older, I'm able to appreciate and respect other cultures even if they aren't Asian cultures. On another note, a lot of people can say that Asian food has been westernized by American influence. You know that delicious Chinese takeout you get? There's a high chance that it's actually not Chinese food. Dishes, dishes such as orange chicken, general so's chicken, sweet and sour chicken, you might ask? Fake. Even fortune cookies? Fake. Different restaurants that serve Chinese food such as P.F. Chang's don't serve authentic Chinese food. If you want real, authentic Chinese food, you should go to the undergrounds of Chinatown. Anyways, the, China, the Chinese food you've been eating isn't actually Chinese food. You should call it American food. American Chinese food, if that makes sense. So the date of the annual Chinese New Year would attract more than 100 people every year. Events such as line dancing, drumming, lighting off fireworks, and etc. 
would be one of the main celebrations. If you didn't know, Chinese New Year, other well known as the Spring Festival, is a festival that celebrates the beginning of the New Year and the beginning of the second new moon after the winter, winter solstice. So the celebration lasts for 15 days and throughout the holiday, there are different events such as fireworks, family meals, gift giving, and etc. The holiday puts the family of Ah, so the holiday puts the idea of family into perspective. Most of the things done in Chinese New Year includes family, such as reunion dinner, where the whole family would gather around once a year and eat a dinner. There would also be a time where the fam family would give hongbao, red envelopes with money inside them, to the other family members. They're used, they're used in hope of giving good luck to your family, your relatives, and friends. I mean, who doesn't want free money? After the event of giving red envelopes, those celebrating Chinese New Year would decorate their full, their house in full red. The common tradition is to also dress in red attire, whether it may be suits, dresses, undergarments, or even bras and underwear. In the tradition of decorating everything in red goes back to the ancient times where there were fables of a monster named Yan, who would appear during the Chinese New Year and attack people who would uh, attack people, preferably children. However, Nian's weaknesses were of the color red and loud noises, so that's why those who celebrate Chinese New Year would light up fireworks and decorate their houses in red. At the end, the celebrations and China traditions of Chinese New Year make up what Chinese culture is today. So as I said before, there is diversity among the Asian culture in America. Since the mid-1900s, there has been an increase of the Asian population due to the immigration and refugee settlement of the different Asian regions in Asia. Through immigration, there are also cultural differences experienced when moving to a new country. Different Differences such as the language barrier between the immigrant and the native, the racial discrimination the immigrant experiences, and the challenge of starting new life in a country. The idea of the stereotypes Asians are labeled as is also another factor of the cultural differences they experience. On another note, social and economic issues are also an aspect of the assimilation of the Asian culture. Those social aspect can be defined as the relationship of family or community that's involved in either traditional traditional or modern way of life. And the economic issues can be somewhat defined as a system of class, whether you're born into a low, middle, or high class of family and community. So in conclusion, the Asian culture in Philadelphia mostly includes the idea of history, food, celebrations, traditions, and the assimilation of culture. The overview of this podcast was to let others know what culture is and how we as a society should respect different cultures and ethnicities. Thank you.